Previously on AgentPalmer.com, a few new and new to me things I've been consuming. Rocket Man tells the story of astronaut Pete Conrad, a true original, and my mother is already excitedly expecting her return appearance. This is The Palmer Files, episode 51, with the return of Tristan the Anarchaeologist. We talk about what unarchaeology is and how it came to be, plus the idea of seeding ideas and letting others help sow them, throwing convention out the window, and much, much more. Are you ready? Let's do the show! Welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Sturchik, also known as Agent Palmer, and on this 51st episode is a returning guest and friend of the podcast, Tristan Boyle, known as the Anarchaeologist to some, co-founder of the Archaeology Podcast Network to others, and recently as one of the minds behind Unarchaeology. What is that? What is Unarchaeology, you ask? It's what I asked Tristan, so I'll let him explain during the episode, but you know that this episode isn't just about one thing, they rarely ever are. It is about unarchaeology, of course, but it's about process, it's about sharing, and it's about being open to putting things out into the universe and seeing what happens. Hopefully, Tristan's story will inspire and empower you. Now, before we get going, remember that if you want to discuss the episode as you listen or afterwards, you can tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Tristan at Anarchaeologist, that's A-N-A-R-C-H-A-E-O-L-O-G-I-S-T, Unarchaeology at Unarchaeology, and this show at The Palmer Files. For all things Tristan, you can visit the archaeologypodcastnetwork.com, which is where you can find his show Modern Myth with Tristan, and for all things unarchaeology, you can visit unarchaeology.org. Email can be sent to this show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com, and remember, your home for all things Agent Palmer is agentpalmer.com. So without further ado, let's dig in to unarchaeology and see what we find. Tristan, we'll start out very simple. What is unarchaeology? Well, take everything that you know about archaeology and un it. Um, I think <laughs> I think it's better to put it like this. Um, I think it was it's a it's a kind of a reaction to like how I see archaeology developing, especially during the pandemic. Um, so I've been part of projects where we've gone to archaeology conferences and started filming archaeology conferences that's with like somebody else and i noticed that like while like tech conferences and like other types of conferences they would like they've been live streaming their conferences for years they've had media there they have people covering it it's there's you know there's a buzz about it but when it came to like archaeology and heritage conferences it was a bit stuffy. It was a bit kind of like, oh, yeah, um, I've got a PowerPoint, but it, I've just got some pictures up here. You know, it, you know, it was very kind of like laid back. And I thought, right, now this is all moving online. We're actually losing some of that kind of interaction with the audience. So we're losing that kind of sense of conference. And it's just turning into these kind of like monologues. So what way could we do different how could we turn this on its head? And that's where I had this little spark of an idea of, I want to do something different. And I think I know what I need to do. But I, I'm going to see if I can get a couple of other people on board and see what happens. So I'm sitting down with a, a friend of mine, who I, who like, a guy called Gavin, and I said, look, I want to do these themes about archaeology. And so I wanted to kind of examine, right, why is it that, why does it feel that like in archaeology, uh, people seem fragmented? Everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Everybody's an island and nobody seems to be joining up in a huge way 
in order to create better change for everybody. It's all like everybody's doing their own little thing. You've got like the Council for British Archaeology. You've got the certified, uh, the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists. You've got the Diggers Forum. You've got like all these interest groups, but they don't, it doesn't feel that they link up. So my first critique was, how do we link everything up? And the second thing was, how do we person to person, archaeologist to archaeologist, help each other out without waiting for these fragmented groups to step in? And those those pieces were the start and the base ingredients for what an archaeology would become. But I had no idea how it would turn out. And honestly, without the amazing people I met along the way and what it's become now, um, I couldn't have achieved it alone. So where, first of all, where along the process do you get the name on archaeology? Because as from a sheer naming standpoint, like it was because because you I, I, you know, full disclosure, I was a little bit behind the scenes at one point, um, slowly but surely, like here and there. And the name like you were like, hey, you want to help out with this thing? Yeah, what's it called? An archaeology. Like, amazing. Like so, an amazing name. Because And I know you. So like it's possible that this name has been like sitting there somewhere for you for a while. So I I won't claim to I won't claim the name. Um, but I will say that one of the coolest things that I, oh, back when I was uh, a young archaeologist, <laughs> when I was accidentally led astray during my degree program to become an archaeologist, I remember hearing of a really cool thing uh, called an unconference. Now, an unconference <laughs> is really cool. Uh, basically, it was a bunch of punk archaeologists, self styled punk archaeologists, who, you know, did beat poems as, as like, uh, instead of like um, speeches, they did presentations as rock songs, and it was all done by themselves. It was DIY and punk AF, so it was really cool, and that stuck with me, you know. Now, did and, you ever get to attend one of these? Or well, you see, the thing is, this is the thing. I know two of the punk archaeologists who were involved in it, and I was like, when's this happening again? Oh man, uh, we just wanted to do it one time, and that was it. You know, like <laughs> it, it was, it was an. But that adds to the 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 kind of transient property that it has. It's cool because it wasn't this huge planned grand narrative. It was the like we need to do this. Okay, let's do it. Bam. Okay. And that energy excited me. That really kind of was like, ooh, I like that kind of we need to do this, let's go and do it. Let's not plan ahead, like do all this intricate planning. Let's go and do something. But part of me was like, right, I don't I don't know how to exactly do this, right? So here I am planning out these themes, you know, the fragmentation theme and the let's do it ourselves theme, right? And so I think over about a month, I would kind of formulated the kind of questions under these themes that I think that the panel should answer. Okay. Right? Yeah. And now I've got that and I'm going to go to social media. And I'm going to get a couple of people to help me out, you know, kind of like run the whole thing. But in my, in my head at this point, I'm thinking I'm going to have to present. I'm going to have to write stuff. I'm going to have to moderate. I'm going to have to make sure the tech is okay. You know, like I'm, I, I don't really expect a lot from the people I'm reaching out to but <laughs> I put it everywhere and then suddenly it's like ping 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 ping, ping, ping. <laughs> I'm like oh wow there's there's a lot of people here right and um, let's all get into a whatsapp group you know and so I'm putting everybody in a whatsapp group and I'm like okay this is the kind of things we want to do and then the first meeting and holy moly it was it was something else. It was I, I could I could sense this kind of like car the, the the this something happening, but it was difficult because 
I mean, when you go do projects like this, you expect somebody to be in charge and somebody to be the leader and the somebody to be the one who makes the final call and everything. And I didn't necessarily want to take that on, but I knew being the progenitor of the original idea, it would almost fall to me. But at each point, I kind of said, look, um, I don't want to be the person barking orders. What do you think? And the only thing that I stuck to was, no, we don't we don't need to be professional by the normal standards. Um, we, we don't need to do things by the books like that you would normally expect. We have the space, the safe space here to actually twist things and change things and, you know, undermine things. And quickly, um, you know, people got on board. And I think it took a while for some people to actually get out of that headspace of like, oh, what? But if we do that, it, it's it's not really what people do at archaeology conferences. And it, it took a That's while. That's the point. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Whatever we do at archaeology conferences, let's do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it, you know, and like, so th- there's this slowly moving kind of train, like it's like choo-choo, kind of, kind of going along. And I'm, I'm thinking like, right, well, one of the biggest problems with archaeology conferences is accessibility. But like... I'm fortunate, like, I don't have the background where I know a lot about accessibility. Like, I don't have that lived experience. And I don't, I don't necessarily know what to look for. So I kind of put it out to say, if anybody's, if anybody particularly knows about accessibility, I'd be really interested to talk to you. Could you tell us something behind the scenes? And, um, and yeah, we, we actually got somebody um, to, who was uh, who we we'd been interested in inviting them in for a panel position, which they ended up doing as well. But we kind of asked them, "Oh, I know you're doing a panel thing, but would you mind kind of like telling us a little bit about accessibility?" And then they came to the committee meetings, and then they were part of the committee, uh, an irreplaceable part of the committee, as with everybody committee members. So. I'll, I'll have to start putting names in here. So um, when we started out, um, we had Kate, um, Claire, Naomi. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get really embarrassed and forget somebody. Uh, and Miller was the one who came on for the uh, accessibility stuff. Now, is this... Mm-hmm. Uh, like what? What's a timeline here? Like, oh. for, for, you, no, and I, no, I'm not 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 specifics, yeah. but like obviously you have the idea, so, you start putting the committee yeah. together. Um, well, because it, to me, yeah. right? I, I'm I'm just <laughs> I'm just a, a guy who likes you. Like I I you yeah. know, and and to me, it felt like whatever you did behind the scenes. By the time it started being committee, right? It was like okay, we've got a thing, and we're gonna do it. And it felt like. I talked to you or had a conversation with you on Twitter or something. And it was like, I have this idea. And then like two months later, it was like, we have a date and we're going to do this in six months or eight months or whatever. Like it felt like such yeah. a massive, um, like w- why wait? I think, well, what happened was very quickly with the first couple of meetings, it really accelerated. Like it went really fast and then uh, what happened was um uh, like uh, I, I think it was uh, trying to think it was definitely uh, kate basically came on uh, kate who kate, uh, was one of the original people who got in touch touch with me she started making a website and f- yeah of her own back like you, this is this is what this is what the amazing thing about the committee was that like we had general goals that we wanted to achieve so we wanted a like a, a like a, um, a logo right we needed a logo we needed a description we probably needed to have a look at maybe getting a website and like I was I do the archaeology podcast network so th- there was an idea at one point to kind of just put an extra page on that for that. And then it kind of became this thing where people were like, okay, 
oh, I know we need to get that done. Okay, let's. I'll take that. And then they come back the next meeting, and I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> you, you put all this work in. I'm just like, holy moly. Um, although I must say, I'll I'll draw it back a wee bit. Okay. There was not really roles that people had been assigned in the committee. So I I put it as, um, I, I kind of said, look, I need some people to help me moderate the Twitch chat, YouTube chat, and I need some people to help me kind of work in the background. And um, I think at the first meeting I had said, look, I need somebody to liaise with the uh, the panelists. And Kate said she would do that. But these original jobs, and I remember Naomi was going to be Naomi, who's what who was um, ended up doing the live document stuff. I will get to the live document very soon. But she um, she was started as just a moderator, and her final role was completely different. The reason is that what happened was uh, the goals became apparent. You know what we needed to do. And instead of me saying, you do this, you do that, people were picking up what they needed or what they could do. And I thought that was really amazing. I think a lot of people, everybody kind of learned a lot, you know, from what was kind of like evolving. So from about the first or second committee meeting, we got onto the page that like we needed to do a lot of the writing for like what was happening and then it was decided oh we need somewhere to put all this writing and then the website started appearing we need graphics for the website and so claire who's like um i think she's a second year student she was doing all our like graphic stuff for us because she's from a kind of like marketing background but she just like oh i can do this and like this is this is the amazing thing is that all these people um even though, like, I, I put it out to, like, a lot of just archaeology groups, we we got all these people in who had all these amazing talents and skills. And in a week or in two weeks, they were just popping up with this amazing stuff. It was almost too good to be true. Now, real quick, to, to take one step backwards, mm-hmm. it was on Twitch and YouTube, but when mm-hmm. do you decide... Those are the platforms that this is and, and, and that this is going to be fully digital, um, you know, because obviously there are other mm-hmm. platforms, especially when we talk about um, and, and I don't know if people are fam- familiar with this. But when you're talking about online conferences, Twitch and YouTube are great plat- public platforms, but there are private platforms that exist or or not so public platforms that you can pay for. So how do you decide these are the platforms we're going to use. Well, when I put the call for participants originally through and I had the idea, that's when I had kind of put into the text of that call, oh, we're going to do YouTube and Twitch, right? But it was kind of thought, like we had a guy come in, Jeevan, who was going to be doing some of the moderating as well uh, for the Twitch platform. And it was kind of decided that we would try and get everything else organized first, and then we would decide on our platforms. Uh, one of the things that we realized in terms of accessibility, it was raised by Miller, was um, that we needed to have a way of having live captioning on what we're doing. Because accessibility-wise, we wanted to set the gold standard for what should be done. Sure. So, um, so we were looking at like, and there were a number of different options. You know, we were looking at like, I think there was a banana meter um, was able to do it, and obviously YouTube auto generates captions, and Zoom can be done to do it. And there was a lot of questions going on, but I think for the most part, um, it, when I when I first put out the call for participants. I was looking for, I launched that in August and I was looking to do the conference in November. However, it got very, it was not very uh, far on before we realized we couldn't do it in November. So instead we said, right, 
we need to do better. We can go next year to do it instead. And that's when we had the breathing space to actually start building stuff that was happening. Um, because at that point, we hadn't even decided how the live document would be done. So let's fast forward. The event is about to happen. I think maybe two weeks before there was a, a test uh, of, the, of the technology, which, uh, you know, uh, uh, shout out to you guys for doing it publicly because there are some people that are like, no, nah, we're, we're going to do this as privately as possible. But it, you don't learn anything that way. Um, so I, I showed up for your uh, 90 minute Twitch stream or whatever it was mm -hmm. that was testing things out. And um, that was good. It was it, good. It was a good test. You know, it, it was a great test. But then, you know, two weeks later, I, you know, I, I woke up a little bit early because you were in, you know, I, yeah. across the Atlantic. And <laughs> I, no. you know, I spent a couple, you know, a bunch of hours hanging out with you guys. And it was fun to be in the chat. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I, you know, I'll be honest, I was bouncing around between both platforms just because I was curious. Um, but Twitch is a lot easier for me. I just throw that. I, I had you on the big screen because why not? And it, yeah. it, I will tell you, as someone who's not an archaeologist, it was intriguing and entertaining and educating from a standpoint of just like, well, you know, I've talked to you. I've talked to Chris. Like, I... I I, I know of archaeology, um, but y you you opened my eyes to like the and the discussions opened my eyes. So for you, it's the day. All this stuff has been you you've 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 established a team. All of these people, all of these moving pieces, it's happening. Tristan, what's it like when you wake up that morning? It's like it's 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 happening today. Do you know, uh, we were messaging because we, we ended up using Discord as our kind of organizing platform. We moved away from WhatsApp. And I think one of the things that we kind of were worried about is just like everything going wrong. You know what I mean? Like, um, but we, we checked in nice and early and everyone was there. Everyone was fine. Live. So the idea of just briefly, the live document was the idea that we had like a Google, um, uh, I can't even remember what it's called now. Um, it's like a Google Jamboard that was available for the audience to kind of like write down their ideas and thoughts during the panel so that like they have a chance to give their voice as well. And that was meant to be kind of like simulating the audience in the room. And that was going live first. And so we were kind of like, there was always a concern about trolls, like especially during the pandemic. Uh, you've heard of Zoom bombing before, yeah. haven't you? Yes. So like people coming in and, you know, and unfortunately there have been several instances of actually like uh, at a couple of heritage conferences, um, one was like quite violent anti-Semitic kind of like uh, stuff flashed on the screen and you know there were a lot of unsavory things happening and we were kind of very conscious that we couldn't use zoom uh, because we wanted to take extra steps to make sure it wasn't even possible but obviously having this live document that everybody could write on that was open to abuse so we were kind of like on our toes about whether you know that would happen we had the uh, but this is the thing we had one of our key things was uh, we need to be in control and if anything does happen we can press the button to stop it you know yeah. and w we were thinking about oh, okay if this happens what what happens then and you know we weren't just kind of like transplanting the physical uh, conference onto a digital space we we're actually thinking about like well what are the restraints of the digital space and how do we make um, adjustments for that and that's a really really important kind of like part of the the story as well is because it's easy enough to kind of say right we'll just do a digital conference but like I think it's really really important to actually understand 
why you're creating it. So there I am on the computer um, by, I think, 9 a.m. in the morning, and I'm kind of looking at the messages and thinking, right, um, what's that, what I need to do? And I, I remember seeing it, it's like, well, you just need to get ready for, <laughs> for your opening speech. Um, I think one of the other things about our archaeology that I need to make really clear is that, like, archaeology is very kind of, like, privileged. And I mean that in a really, really, like, I'm trying to be really honest about it because, unfortunately, like, archaeology doesn't seem to have the diversity uh, th that even matches the normal population. And I think there's a number of reasons why that is. And a lot is it's to do with the kind of environment that people are in, you know, the kind of opportunities that are there and the barriers. And so we actually, at one point with our panels, felt that we needed more people from different backgrounds uh, to adequately, like, provide the the range of viewpoints and perspectives that we were trying to change uh, i've actually been at an archaeology um uh, conference and i mean no joke it was about the future of the of archaeology in terms of like employment in terms of like um kind of development and it was a manal and this was back in like 2017 like it was an all male panel of eight people eight people it's not like like i mean somebody i i don't think you should make any excuses but for eight people and you couldn't find one woman to talk you know that happens a lot that's not a that's not a rare thing and so we wanted to make sure that our panels were balanced in lots of different ways and there was actually even a discussion whether, and I completely understand this, whether I should be even introducing it, you know, uh, because someone like me, a like a white man who in archaeology with a beard, uh, <laughs> with lots of lots of great jumpers. Um, no, they're not great. Uh, they're just jumpers. I mean, that's the common theme of what you think when you think of an archaeologist. But at the same time, you know, I'd written out like what I thought the introduction should be, and it was decided the committee that like we, we would take that, um, because I think I think it's important to show the solidarity there. Um, I feel like on archaeology may have started as something from me, but I could never have created by myself what the event actually went like um i i remember it was about 10 to 11 and we were all in uh, in a group chat uh chatting to each other on discord in a room everybody's getting ready the panelists are getting ready because what we eventually did was we launched it through google meet uh because they did active live captions uh for each person so it was really easy and uh, yeah, I remember being 10 to 11 and, you know, the live stream is going up and I was getting ready for my speech. And I remember Miller counting me in and I'm just like, <laughs> it's too late to back out now. <laughs> and it's like, I'm getting signals from Miller with like, he, he's got his webcam on and he's like, five, four, three, two, one. And then it's like silently. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to launch in straight at one, and I'm hoping I don't have to wait a couple of seconds. Uh, but looking back at the VOD, it was perfect. And I remember, you know, looking into the, the, the camera and just like, you know, reading out this thing and just, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, holy, holy moly, like, it's happening. It's here. Oh my God, right, don't rush, don't rush this and say it all, say it all. And I remember finishing the last line and smiling and being like, I hope it's not one of those, you know, awkward TV moments where the, the presenter just has to stand and smile. But it came out really, really well at the end. Um, and then it was into the first, um, the first panel and I was immediately 
on the chat just to be like, right, let's see what happens. Um, and that, that that's where we started off the day. It was, it was something else. And we're on the other side of it now, obviously. Mm-hmm. L- looking back, you've had time to process what has happened. Um, so I want to ask two questions. One, we bring it to a close. And I understand there's still work to be done at, at that point. Uh, but, but the event comes to a close and there's work to be done. But the event's over and it, it's happened. Like, what is your initial reaction for like, we did it. Not we're doing it like you had in the morning, but like uh-huh. we did it. Mission, like obviously there's a lot, there's post things to do. I get that. But yeah. like mission accomplished. We started it. We did it. We finished it. It's done. Like what's your initial reaction there? I like, I, I'm like, I felt so elated and so proud of the whole committee. Um, it was it was really such a such a like combined community effort. It was really something where me and my co-organizers and we all had a part to play, and everybody did an amazing job. I was just so I am still to this day so proud of everybody putting in their all. We had Tash and. Uh, Phoenix, who are our facilitators, like leading the panels and helping the panels do their stuff. We had like uh, I think Alicia and Bianca like uh, doing the moderation, and we we just had and uh, I think there was Lauren as well who was on the live document. We had so many amazing pe- th- uh, people. N- uh, Nathala, I should definitely mention her, and like just so many amazing people working like with every little bit and it was just it was great i mean we we had the discord open for like uh we had a special channel which was urgent um you know please please respond and that was for (laughs) if anything happened um and then there was organizers chat and everything it was it was so good and like my brother um who's a musician he actually did the uh lunchtime break um, because I'd never been to an archaeology conference where they had music at lunchtime, and I thought it was a, it was something that needs to happen, you know. Um, sure. I mean, th- there needs to be something to break it up, and you're yeah. also. I mean, this is the other thing you're you're doing the unarchaeology thing. So if it doesn't happen at the other yeah. places, it has to happen here. I was. I came away from it be feeling so proud and elated. And I thought it was just it was just amazing to see the spark of an idea and then how much developed beyond what I could have ever imagined. It was it was really something. And I, I kind of felt like this team, like I feel like that was the feeling after it. With the whole team, like we could do anything. Like it doesn't stop here. And I, I feel like that essentially captured that energy of like, and, and still to this, uh, as we're going forward, it doesn't end here. You know, I, I think everybody has their own little ideas of what they want on archaeology to mean. And I think one of the great things is that it is such a flexible term because I feel like it represents something like diff- fundamentally different to what currently exists in the heritage sector but it goes beyond that because i think where we are in society i feel like there's a lot of times where people feel that they can't make a difference and they feel kind of isolated and alone and i think what this demonstrates in a very specific and tiny way is that people coming together to achieve something they don't need a big company they don't need a big organization and they don't need a all need to have uh, individually all these skills and they can actually work with other people and develop skills together in order to achieve something and that, that for me is the real powerful takeaway and obviously we are now further removed from that moment and the the transcripts have come out we talk about that yeah. accessibility that that was a huge part Especially, mm-hmm. you know, the, the the VODs are going up here and there. Um, yeah. Videos on demand for you who aren't 
um, and, <laughs> and the lingo. <laughs> and so, um, you know, not to put it to too fine a point on it, but is there going to be a 2.0? Like, because obviously what you've established and the, the goals that you have set forth, they're not one and done things. They're ongoing conversations and they're fluid conversations because they change based on things that happen all the time. I think I'll not speak for everybody on the committee, but I think for the most part, I think we all see some form of a, another conference happening next year. Uh, but I think there's been a lot of talk about, well, what do we want to do other than that? Like, well, I you've learned. Been, I mean, you've done yeah. it, right? So it's what have you learned? What can you do different? Like you did it in the, you did it. Uh, yeah. I, I, I want to say in the middle. Not you did it during yeah. a global pandemic, give or take, right? So I, I feel like you mm -hmm. know you have the ability if you go next year to do. I mean, obviously the online component is important for accessibility, but yeah. you can go to a shared space if you want. Like th there, there mm -hmm. are lots of things that you can build off of this from i think it's important to realize that the the way it was done this year is definitely in response to and within the scope of a pandemic and i think really going forward um it won't be up to any individual person within the committee to say this is what has to happen but rather that is part of the discussions that we all have and agree together. You know, I think one of the biggest things I've learned from being part of this decision process is to kind of like let go of ideas and kind of like, you know, throw an idea in and see what other people think about it. And they put their own spin on it. I, I think I've definitely grown a lot more detached from thinking that I have all the answers. Um, for me, I now think of the projects that I do more in terms of principles and goals, because I feel like if you get really hung up on the specifics that something has to be done by, you lose a sense of um, co-participation that actually makes it better. So I think I think what we're actually discussing in the moment is precisely what you've pointed out, is we are learning from this kind of process and we're trying to decide what the best thing is going forward. Uh, because I feel like it's almost like we've we've tackled conferences. <laughs> what else can we tackle now, you know? Um, I'm, you know, like... I mean, journals, I don't know if you know about academic journals in general, but they're literally like an extortion racket. It's yes. ridiculous. Well, let like me, you, yeah, let, sorry. Let me ask this question. <laughs> yeah. Is the committee that you've put together, mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess I'm asking you this question more yeah. than anything specific, like just personally, is this the most diverse or organization you've ever been a part. I mean, obviously you put it yeah. together with that in mind. And I think that that needs to happen a little bit more often, yeah. not we're putting together and they know you, but, but, and, and, and have you learned more like than, than, ha yeah. you know, because of it, I think, well, what's been really good. Well, I, I made no, I, I like I didn't use any euphemisms in the call for participants. I specifically said I'm looking for people from like diverse backgrounds, and I think it, maybe it helps that I'm like younger and I have an archaeologist in my <laughs> Twitter handle. <laughs> but like the kind of people that are willing to talk to me are not necessarily the people who are making a name for themselves in the upper echelons, you know, like. I feel like I tried to make come across that I wanted lots of people from different backgrounds and that's who I got. Um, it is definitely one of the most diverse committees that I have ever sat on. Um, it's probably one of the most diverse projects that I've ever been a part of. And I definitely, definitely, definitely feel that I have seen, it's almost not like, it's not just for my benefit I think it's actually been of benefit to the project as a whole to have that. Like, 
there are some things here that I don't think I could have ever done myself. Um, and I think I owe that to, you know, people's different backgrounds, their, you know, and their skills. And so, like, I think uh, that, you know, I've been so lucky to be a part of this. But it's not like it's been personally so rewarding to me. It's more that, like, I feel privileged to have been a part of this, you know, uh, to be able to put my little two cents in at some points. And I think that, for me, has been really good to kind of step back step away from kind of like thing being like right well i think it should be this i think it should be that and instead saying right well i think this is kind of where we're going what's the best way to do that so there's been a lot of learning for me and it's been really really good um particularly because i've let go of stuff you know now i i asked this question knowing fully well it's a loaded question but how Ooh. many how many other ideas have, have have you do you now have um, for other projects you want to do? Because I feel like you start something like this and 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 it and it is a success and and you do have this committee and you can't help but think like what else can I do? Um, <laughs> it's a da- it's a daily struggle, Jace. <laughs> like it, it really is like. I am so bad at it, and it, it's and the worst thing is I I have a dog now, and I go for walks with the dog, and that is time for me to think, and that's a very dangerous thing because if I start thinking about something, you know, that's me. Like I'm done. Like stick a fork in me. I'm I'm cooked uh, because then that becomes an idea. There are so many dead projects. In my Google Drive right now, it is embarrassing. Like I have, I have, I, you know what? Look, I look, think... you, we 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 could go we could go tete a tete at this because like I can't tell you how many yeah. unfinished projects, blog posts, podcast ideas, and other mm-hmm, general mm-hmm. creative things that are in my Google Drive. In fact, my Google see, Drive is mostly unfinished <laughs> works. But, but you see, this is the the the, 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 the unarchaeology could have been one of those projects for me easily. Okay, so what uh, is I, stopping you from reaching out on one of the next ones? <laughs> um, I think, I think maybe because. On archaeology was specifically meant to be something bigger than just me. You know, like I feel like when it comes to the podcast and some of the other personal projects, it's very me centric. But I really wanted on archaeology to be more than just me. I actually specifically focused it away from myself. And the more I did it, the more value it became because it could then be reaching a wider audience of different people. Whereas the projects I have, um, you know, they're they're ideas that I thought were really good ideas in my head, but I've hit a a block with them, you know? Like, um, I, I mean, I'd love to... I've got a couple of them that are kind of creative writing kind of like things, and I've always wanted to kind of do a fiction podcast i think that would be really cool but well you've, I just, you've we, we've done one before well yes technically we, we, <laughs> we have done one before and i mean like with you know the sound effects and everything and um i kind of like i i wish i wish i had the the way of doing it without you know without a narrator with just like an actual like radio play i think that would be really cool i've got a couple of ideas um but it's just like trying to make that work because when i'm writing it it's like oh okay i know what the general story is and then i'll have an idea pop into my head like well how do you do the sound effect for that i'm like god i i don't know um Right, let me go and look that up. Yeah, but how is this? Ba- but, but 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 now, right? You've done unarchaeology, uh-huh. and you know, you know, 
I, I, I think, I think in, in your heart of hearts, you know that if you put a script like this together, you have me, you have, there are other people you can reach out to. You know it's yeah. not going to be you in a room doing a solo radio play. So, like, why not take this, and look, it's still you, but, like, you know it's not going to be solely you, like, you know, solo you. Le- take what you've learned from on archaeology, and maybe it's not on such a grand community scale, granted, yeah. but but you know that you have help, and let let that let that be somebody else's problem or collaboration to figure yeah. out how to do that sound effect, and just keep going. I think I think that is something I am learning and having to learn is this kind of thing. I just I sometimes feel like I like say you were making a cake with somebody, right? And you're kind of like putting the put, putting ever, all the wet ingredients together in a bowl. Like sometimes you want to present at least the you want the person to decorate the cake, but you you want to have at least done all the work to show your the effort you've put in in actually baking the cake. You know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes my projects, I'm still adding eggs, <laughs> and I'm like, and somebody's there with their icing, you know, and. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe they maybe they don't maybe they they maybe they never wanted to do the icing. Maybe they wanted to actually weigh out some of the ingredients. That's cool, but like it's it's one of these things where it's like sometimes I'm over organized and sometimes I'm under organized. And it, it, it's very very kind of like sporadic. It's chaos. It's cuz I'm could, the same way. Like there are times when I will show up fully prepared for something. And there are mm-hmm. other times when it works and you don't know that I'm woefully underprepared, but I know personally like, Oh, dodged a bullet there. That turned out way better than it should have. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know what happens because sometimes I feel very hyper-focused and I'm like, really like I, I'm doing, I like I can write like 500 words in less than an hour. And I've got like all these ideas. I'm writing them all down. And then other times I literally sit in front of like a blinking cursor. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is the only time I've got today to do this. Uh, what do I write? What do I write? And it's just like, and then I'm just like looking up something else. And oh, and the emails come in and oh, I've got a notification on my phone. And I just, I've lost it, you know, and I just, I wish I could control that a bit better, but, um, it just, it's all part of the, 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 there's almost like not enough feedback from your own stuff that you kind of feel like, right, I'll come back to it, you know, I'll come back to it, but maybe you're right. Maybe I need to get others involved again. Yeah. It's so for me. I have a core group of sounding boards and it's not like a discord channel, although God, like if it was, that would be fantastic. But it's just like, there are four or five phone numbers in my phone that if I have an idea that I get stuck on or that I'm not sure if it's good, those are the people I call. And Mm -hmm. most of them, most of the time I'll get one of them. Like I I can call the first, the second, the third, by the time I hit the fourth number, I've hit, you know, or maybe I don't need to call all four, but I'll hit somebody and I go, Hey, Mm -hmm. all right. So I have this idea for a post. Hear me out. Hear me out. Is, is this a good idea? And, uh, usually, uh, because these are my normal sounding boards, they'll go, well, you did something like that a couple of years ago or like, you know, that sounds crazy or you need to develop that further. But mm-hmm. I need these people because I've, and, and I feel like it's the one difference between what you described, which is where I was and where I am now, which is I still have all those, unfi- those ideas are still initially written in the doc somewhere or in a notebook mm-hmm. somewhere. Cause you have to get it out. And that, yeah. I think that's a, that's a, just a, a creative thing. Y- yeah. You just got to get it out. Then That's when you put it into the world. Now, there are a couple ways to process this, and I don't want to throw them under the bus because I do that a lot. But Bill Sweeney likes to put pressure on himself, even though he knows he won't maybe necessarily follow through. He he likes to procrastinate, and he'll say that. And he'll also say, like, I'll tell people I'm going to do this, so it puts more onus on me to actually follow through. Now, sometimes that's an empty threat, and sometimes it's 
true. And sometimes when I go, hey, Tristan, I got an idea. And now you know that I've got this idea yeah. and you can hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. But you're busy. So I know you're not going to hold me accountable. And it's great for me because then I get sounding board. And you're going you know, to tell me that mm-hmm. it's good, it's bad, or it needs some work. And that's it. Now it's back on me to go back in my Google Drive and get lost in the, uh, I know he's your favorite, Indiana Jones at the end of the Raiders where it's just mm-hmm. like in that vault. Because let's yeah. let's be honest, um, that vault is our Google Drive, right? Like there is yeah. definitely an Ark of the Covenant in there that we have completely buried. And because we have so many other ideas coming at us all the time, it just gets buried under, and I, I don't know what's there. I I don't know about you. I do scroll back through the old ideas. On occasion, I'm just like, what's in here? What can I do now? Maybe mm-hmm. maybe maybe two years ago when I wrote it down wasn't the time, but I, I don't know. You might have, you know. Yeah, no, it, I've actually been looking at a, pre, a couple because um, I've, I've felt a wee bit kind of like, with regards to actually like podcasting, I, I've kind of hit a little bit of a bump because I'm like, I, I really want to get better at being able to actually make a statement and make a monologue. And I really suck at monologues. I'm much better bouncing off uh, other people, but there are things I have to say and I struggle with that. So I've been trying to go back and seeing if I can resurrect a couple of ideas and kind of make them work because I think there are there are there's kind of legitimate things that I think should be out there, uh, and you know, in the last two years, nobody else has said them. So, you know. Well, but if you know you need somebody, I mm-hmm. mean, y- yeah, you can always yeah. get a co-host like that. That's not, you know, it, yeah. It's but possible. then, then that's that's scheduling. Well, that's <laughs> I get yeah. Sorry, I I'm putting up barriers here. I no, am no, and, it's, it's fine. But look, mm-hmm. here's the thing, right? And this is the big difference between what we're talking about right now and unarchaeology. Unarchaeology was a full committee where yeah, there was still scheduling involved, but you know, if we had seventy five percent of the crew together, you were good. Like you yeah. could, you could let it go. And now we're talking about um. You plus whoever, right? And and yeah. it, and it and it's not just a committee. It's not a group where you know mm-hmm. a quorum of whatever is is acceptable. It's well now I have to be a part of it, and mm-hmm. it's me plus whomever. And uh, my work processes are when I have the time, and scheduling becomes it. Like I I get it, um, but the more things that we can create that are fluid you know that work that way yeah um all, all the better i mean this this show that you're on right now mm-hmm. this is episode 51 and i still only kind of have a process down like i do yeah. but i don't and uh mm-hmm. you know all credit to you from way back on episode five saying that this was inevitable <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> I think it was something like doomed to, to podcast. Doomed to podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it happened, but we, we find our processes along the way. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, and I'm excited because I feel like on archeology is a start for you. I'm not saying like, Oh, he's just going to keep creating conferences and digital. No, but I feel like mm-hmm. for you, it was a huge success. And it was something that you were able to seed Mm -hmm. and then let other people sow. Mm -hmm. And that is not, first of all, there are not a lot of people in the world who can do that. Right? Like, I think about all the ideas I have. And if you were to tell me five of them could be, I could seed and let other people sow, uh, I, I, I don't know if I could do that. And you've done that. That like the hard part is doing it the first time and you've done that. So mm-hmm. like more power to you. And I know the, the final product was a, a community thing, right? Yeah. I get that. But you were able to seed it and go, I need help. And that's huge. Not a lot of people can make that statement. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like there's a legacy 
like when you talk about what the unconference originally was and what mm-hmm. you did uh in in a maybe you got you know it, it would be great to see some you know sl- Archae- slam archaeology poetry and some, you know, totally. death metal, you know, um, death metal digs. I feel like that would be a great. Um, but like, I might steal that. That's really good. <laughs> but like, you, you know, what you did for content in talking about diversity and in mm-hmm. talking and, and in having a diverse, you know, in, in not mm-hmm. having a, a, a mantle or not having yeah. a white mantle for that matter, right? Like, um, these things are everlasting, but they are the same as what that original concept was. Um, and I, I mean, Mm -hmm. I, I say mission accomplished because I'm just an observer really. Um, and I'll give you my two cents when you ask. I would say mission accomplished. I think of all things considered, I think we, for, for what was set out, um, I think it couldn't have gone better. And I think there, you know, there's a couple of things I think we would augment, but uh, I, I can't wait to see what we have planned. And I, you know, like, and I, I say that really like, because I can't wait to kind of be a part of that group and decide that like um, that it becomes part of that kind of like that space Here's here's my question for you. Um, not to put it on me, but I'm not an archaeologist, mm-hmm. and I don't know. How, you know, I enjoyed it as just a person who kind of knows about history, mm-hmm. um, different parts, but I know about history. Is someone like me? Um, now I attended the conference because I know you, mm-hmm. um, but is someone like me be you know showing up? who's not in the industry and not a student and um, participates and still enjoys the discussion. It was that an, you know, was that a part of the original conversation of trying to make it more general for somebody like me that has no, you know, isn't in the industry or is it like, you know, or is the fact that I enjoyed it like a happy accident? No, I, I think one of the key things that I've definitely been very very keen on is making sure that um that like archaeology isn't like cordoned off or it isn't only for a certain type of person i think one of the biggest problems we have is in archaeology is that like it's it's very much seen as like um there's certain people who can um there's certain people who can kind of like gatekeep archaeology and it's there's this weird thin line of like obviously ancient aliens kind of stuff really bothers me but uh, what bothers me more is they're they've got done a really good job of getting people's attention and i feel like history and heritage almost needs to kind of have that attention grabbing like ability as well because like people of all kind of like backgrounds are interested in history in the past. Like I'm pretty sure most people are interested, even if they don't say they're interested. And like, I think we have this kind of universal appeal. It's just about making it kind of like universal enough that people are able to understand it within their own kind of like culture and their own minds. So like, the fact that we're doing something that's not just your bog standard archaeology, I would hope attracts people who don't really like who don't who wouldn't usually consider it. And I would want to be going forward like that so that we could have um, like a, kind of a better archaeology overall, a better kind of understanding of history. Um, I'm definitely kind of like keen for as many different people to get involved as possible yeah i i look at it like um and i completely understand where you're coming at with the ancient aliens thing but i also feel like i think about it like cosmos right whether it's the original um or the the more recent one um 
Cosmos was really well done. But if you weren't mm-hmm. already and 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 it was so and, and it was written both in the 70s and now in a way where it was easily understandable regardless of how much education you have or what your interest level was. Mm-hmm. The problem is the people that watched it were already interested in it and the people that probably need to watch it or you know that should watch it are the people that don't know they're interested in it and how do you grab them yeah totally Uh, i mean this is the thing is that like is it is it a content issue or is it an optics issue you know this is i i'll go back to ancient aliens the thing is they've got their optics down perfectly they 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 know how to grab people's attention they know how to keep the attention and they know how to keep the suspense but it's all deceitful um, so it's almost like the content is bad, but the way they market it is good. And so they've managed to kind of build that momentum. Whereas I think this is where I was kind of getting at with the whole fragmented, isolated archaeologists is that everybody wants to make a name for themselves because that's what, how you kind of like, that's how you get more kind of appearances is because people know you as the person for this. And it kind of creates a system where people are like almost like not fighting, but like contesting for like airtime. And so like archaeologists will speak about their very specific little area niche and they'll kind of like just be the content for a, 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 a like a wider discussion on something and they won't ever speak out about anything, you know, Um it's only certain people like I think the only person who's ever really properly spoken out about, for example, diversity in archaeology is Raksha Dave, who is um, an archaeologist on Time Team. And she just I mean, she's a woman of color. And so, like, she's talked about the problems of male panels and wannels and stuff. Um, but it's kind of like the media goes to her because they're like, well, she's the kind of person who would talk about it. Yeah. And I think we need to have, there needs to be more actually people going, well, I know it doesn't affect me directly, but it's making the whole place worse. If we don't have, if we're having the same people over and over again, Um, it's, it's tough because you want to challenge the norms of archeology span but you don't want to buy in to the conspiracy, you know? Well, it's, and that but, is... but that's similar to anything else, right? Like mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a, I'm a four, let's say 40 something. Cause we'll round up and make it, make me seem older than I am. But I'm a 40 something white Jew, right? Uh-huh. Unless people really want, and I don't have an opinion on Israel. Like I, uh-huh. I just don't. But that's the only thing they're coming to me from. Nobody's going to ask me about racism in this country. Mm. Nobody's going to talk to me about gender issues. I'm a mm-hmm. white dude, right? Like I, you know what I mean? Like I, unless I was ultra orthodox and looked Jewish, nobody's coming to me for any of that stuff, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Does that mean I don't have a valid opinion? Especially if I'm for diversity. No, it. I mean it. I, I means I can talk about it, but but nobody's coming to me for that. So, yeah, but I think this is the, the but, it's interesting. Yeah, sorry, go on. Well, I was just going to say that that's the optics thing for everything, right? Because because mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. di- diversity in every way, right? Gender, cultural, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah, that's a conversation that's going on across all things. And who mm-hmm, talks totally. about it? Who do they go to? They go to the, you know, do they go to women of color to talk about gender and racial issues Mm -hmm. well all right but now you're typecasting everything yeah i think the the problem is that for a very long time they didn't do that and that there were experts this uh, is over correcting basically but i don't know if it's over correcting i i feel like we haven't got i i feel like um for some people just the existence of people who are not like them talking about these issues is even the smallest bit is overcorrecting. I feel like until you have on like news shows in America or Canada or the UK, if you had a 
a majority of women of color on those TV shows, on like news programs, then I'd say, okay, seems like we're um, we're discriminated against white men. But until that point, I feel like we've not had enough kind of different perspectives. And I think I get the typecasting argument. I think the problem is, and I've heard this before as well, actually, with regards to who we were getting for the panels, the kind of people who are approached to do the panels are always the same people because they are the people you know will talk about things and puts a lot of undue pressure on those people in particular. So, like, you know, especially because, you know, some of the stuff is, like, there's trauma associated with it, you know? It can be kind of damaging. And, like, I feel that there almost needs to be a better way of beyond the the media kind of hype and the media kind of representation of these discussions there must be a better way of getting people to talk about it because i i just i i feel like there's the big disconnect between who we are as people in society and the headlines you know i i'm i'm really quite disillusioned with the media machine uh, and its attempt at like fixing things well, the, uh, then you need more unarchaeology ideas yeah. because that's the start, right? It it yeah. starts with something like that, and where it goes, you know, I'm I'm not putting it on you, right? Like me, I can come up with an unarchaeology idea. You know, mm-hmm. the listeners can come up with it, but that's the start. Yeah, and that's how you start the conversation. Definitely, definitely. The thing about Tristan and unarchaeology that I find so fascinating is, as I said during the episode, that he seeded the idea, but he didn't sow it alone. He was able to step back from an idea and let others lend a hand without being dictatorial about it. And it is a lesson that Tristan is still learning, one that I have to take to heart more often, and one that we could all use some more faith in. When you can gather together the people who share similar passions in an idea that has brought them together, and if you can get them to get out of their own way, leaving egos at the door, then you stand a chance of letting the group make it greater than you imagined. We are all better as the sum of a group, as opposed to solo efforts. That isn't to say that solo efforts can't work, but with a little help, things can always be improved for the better sometimes in unexpected ways. As we ended our conversation, the next great idea can come from anyone. Tristan can have another go, but it could be my turn, or it could be your turn. Do you have an idea or a repository for unrealized ones? Perhaps it's time to revisit one of them, or a few. Perhaps it's time to see if the universe will provide you with a committee. But, like Tristan did, you have to ask first. Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, episode 51. As a reminder, all links are available in the show notes and now for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you're still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. You can tweet me at Agent Palmer, Tristan at Anarchaeologist, that's A-N-A-R-C-H-A-E-O-L-O-G-I-S-T, Unarchaeology at Unarchaeology, and this show at The Palmer Files. For all things Tristan, you can visit the archaeologypodcastnetwork.com, which is where you can find his show, Modern Myth with Tristan. And for all things on archaeology, you can visit unarchaeology.org. Email can be sent to this show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. And as always, your home for all things Agent Palmer is agentpalmer.com.
right, Tristan, do you have one final question for me? If there was one thing that you could go back and do, one project never finished, and you could go back and capture the energy of your youth and go and do it, what would that project be? So, man, I, this, the, um, while I'm thinking, right, I'm going to talk for a moment and say that this is so not fair. Um, because this is episode 51, and on episode one, Bill asked me uh, one final question that was about unfinished projects. And I don't know how 50 episodes later, I'm still like, I don't know. Um, because in episode one, right, I said that it was Ed finishing a novel that my buddy Jason had written. But you talked about it being my project, and I feel like there's got to be something I've started and not finished. I think... Um, so my first... One of the first solo episodes I did for this show was about my trip to Israel and my four months abroad and how that came to be and, you know, what came of it. And while I was there, I wrote a daily journal. And at one point in my youth, um, I want to, I, 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 it, it might have been some point during uh, college or maybe just after, I had said, you know, I have all of these things. I have a daily log of all four months um you know in, in encompassed in you know what you know, three and a half two and a half composition notebooks of all this stuff i'm gonna type this up and i'm gonna do commentary now right so like I'll, you know I, I type up and try and make sense and make it readable um of like you know April 21st, 2000, I did this. I think it was 2000. Um, you know, we went here, here, and here. And then I fast forward, you know, change font, change color, whatever it is. And I do like, all right, so this is what I still remember of that. This is what impact it still had on me. And maybe it's not, you know, maybe I don't interject from myself now on every day because I think that would get tedious. But I can recreate that journal with um, added content to make it valid um, and bring a full circle. I think if I had actually started it when I first came up with the idea, that would be something I would like to go back and do. And, and I feel like that idea pops into my head every so often, but I don't know how to make that, I think at one point, and this is the whole go back to your youth. I think at one point I had figured out how to make it relevant to other people. Like Tristan, if you didn't know me, how could I mm -hmm. sell you this book? Yeah. And I feel like at one point I knew that now I have no idea. And perhaps it's the curse of more knowledge. I've been writing for the internet. I, I know what kind of a writer I am. How do I make this applicable to more people that, you know, aren't just interested in my story. Um, I think I would have to take the time to do it because I feel like you don't, that's the kind of a project you don't know until you do, but I don't know if I currently have the energy that I once had. And I set it up. I, I'll be honest with you. I, there is a document somewhere in either Google drive or on a disc somewhere that's probably collecting dust where I had literally set up like a template for myself to work from, which was color coded based on like, you know, here's the date. Um, here's the actual entry. And then here's the commentary or my comments on it. And like, you know, to keep it as authentic. I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible because I felt like people would be interested in my misspellings. Um, as if I was being uh, like super creative with like, words and not just telling the story as it was so like you know i misspelled something but this is a, i had a whole template laid out I, I don't know where it is anymore 
maybe that as like the one big thing. Everything else is just like, you know, a short story here or there. That's like huge. Mm-hmm. Though. And I'd have to mm-hmm. retype two and a half full pages, uh, full journal pages of uh, like a hundred. So those are, I think, hundred pages and it was front and back. So mm-hmm. 300 pages or something like that. It, it, it would be a lot. I, I don't know if I have the energy to do that. That's fair enough. I mean, these are things that I've realized that you don't need to do it all at once. You can do it bit by bit. And maybe maybe that's about learning how to put things in bit by bit. Like, in saying that, I can sit and look in the blinking cursor and think, just do a bit, just do a bit. And it still evades me. <laughs> it evades us all. Yeah.